since the Zizbo Longbow C58, you haven't seen anything like this. What's going on everybody? This is Jay and this is the review video of the Yumi Hammer S. About three weeks ago, I did show you the unboxing and the hands-on of this amazing complete product. Now, I didn't mention that it was going to support 4G as you guys can tell from the top. The reason I noticed this is because I was playing with the device at first with Wi-Fi. I downloaded a lot of applications into it. I was playing with it and so on. Now, according to the specifications provided by the website, it didn't show that this was going to support 4G in the USA. So I assumed that it was going to be just another 3G device. The other day I decided to connect, actually yesterday, I decided to connect my SIM card into it, which is the Cricut SIM card, until I got the surprise that this phone does support 4G, guys. This is the most exciting thing that I have seen in a Chinese budget phone. Keep in mind that this is not a flagship killer, so the specifications are not going to be the greatest in the market, but still, guys, this is a great way to start, and I think that for $130, US it is amazing. So now here we're going to start the review by just going around the device. The first thing we got on the front is a 5.5 inch display. It is a 5 point multi touch screen. It has a resolution of 1280 by 720 pixels. It is IPS, OGS and also has the 2.5 DR screen which means that by the edges it's going to curve out a little bit giving you guys a much better grip. On the top of the device we're going to see the ear speaker. We got the proximity light sensor, a 3.2 megapixel sensor camera and also the notification LED light on the left side of the phone. On the bottom, you just got the menu key, the home key, and also the back key. Now, keep in mind that these do not light up. They're just going to glow a little bit on the dark. On the left-hand side, you find here a metallic frame that, if you guys ask me, it looks very similar to the new Note 5. It curves from the back side, as you guys can tell, giving you a very nice grip, and it actually feels very thin. So, yes, this is a metallic frame on the top. Amazingly, you have an IR blaster, and this is a true IR blaster, and it works perfectly well. I was able to get about 30 feet of range. It comes with a 3.5mm headphone jack. On the right side of the phone, we got the bonding rockers up and down together with the power key. And we can notice, guys, already that this metallic frame, it is all one piece. Uh, giving you a very nice and firm grip when you grab it in the hands. As a matter of fact, here I have my little weight scale, so that way we can confirm how many grams this device is. It is super, super heavy. And I'm going to show you that here right now. This device is 201 grams. It is very, very heavy, guys. It is heavier than the Doji F3. Getting a look on the bottom side of the phone, here we can find the USB Type-C port. Now this is the first budget device to come with this and this is very neat because you don't need to worry about what position your charger goes in. Also the data transfer is a little bit faster in my personal experience with this device. Also we got the loudspeaker, we find the main microphone, now this time we do not have a secondary microphone unfortunately. On the back side, we find here an IMX179 Sony sensor. It's uh, claimed to be 13 megapixels, which is credible according to the picture size. Also, we got there the dual LED flash. We find a fingerprint scanner, and this is another highlight about this device that it comes with fingerprint support, uh, something that we don't see on budget devices every single day. We got the Yumi logo, and then finally on the bottom says Hammer S, designed by Yumi in China, Yumi technology, and Android smartphones. Very, very nice. On the back of the phone, we also have this nice texture that reminds me a lot of the OnePlus One. If you guys remember that device, this one feels exactly the same way. Now let me go ahead and open the back cover here. We're going to find the 3200 power milliamp battery, and this is a true 3200 power milliamps. It's lasting me the entire days without any issues. We can see there that yes, it is at 3.8 volts. So that's another exciting part and another highlight about this amazing product. You can see that it is a dual stand, dual standby device and also supports TF cards up to 64 gigabytes. It has the dual LED flash, the camera, and then on the bottom you can see that yes, it has two IMEI information there because it comes with dual SIM, dual standby capabilities. Here we're going to find the antennas for the 4G. I believe the one on the top is for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS, and this one is for the 3G connectivity. Very, very interesting. So let me go ahead and install the battery, and then the back cover, we can notice that it is made of, uh, it looks kind of cheap, but it's actually quite durable. And yes, it is made of plastic still, but it is quite flexible. So installing this in the back, let me go ahead and power on the device, so that way we can check out the boot logo. Pairing on the phone, of course, we're going to find the Yumi logo on here with the white background. It's uh, very simplistic, not a lot of animation in this particular boot logo. 
And now the phone has booted up and here we can see that yes, this is the standard uh, lock screen for the Android 5.1. On the top you got the toggles, you can go directly to the Wi-Fi and connect directly from here. The same we can do with the Bluetooth and other settings as you guys can notice right here. Uh, the phone, like I said before, is supporting 4G. Every time I see that little logo on there, it makes me feel like I have a more expensive device and that's because for a long time guys, I've been wanting this to happen to get 4G support. You also see there the Wi-Fi little icon, we got the battery icon, and then on the bottom we can just go directly into the dialer if we want to. We can go and uh, unlock the device and finally go directly into the camera. Also another great feature about this phone is that it comes with just awake. A lot of people see it as a gimmick but I really don't. It's actually very convenient. Now the only problem is that when you guys have the fingerprint scanner already set up it is not going to work. So let me give you here a little example. The letter C is to go directly into the camera. If I just draw it when the device is asleep you can see that it read it. Uh, normally it would take you directly to the camera but like I said I have my fingerprint scanner set up so let me go ahead and lock the device. And uh, here we can see that yes it is running a little bit of a bug where it's not going to take directly to it if you have a fingerprint setup. The first thing we're going to check out is the settings. If you go here directly from the toggles that we got supported and we tap on here, we're going to see all the settings that we got on this amazing product. We got the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth is the 4.0, also supports HotNut. Um, a lot of people at this point do not know what HotNut is. This is basically the same as NFC or almost the same except that it only works with um, you know other HotNut compatible devices and it's from screen to screen instead of back to back. We got the SIM card options on here, data usage. This is something that we see pretty much every day on Android devices. We got the display, sound and notifications. Uh, the storage, uh, this is a one partition storage as you guys can notice right there. This is very, very convenient for those of you who like to download a lot of content. Now, 16 gigabytes may not be the best option for everybody, but that's why we have expandable storage on this particular product. The next one we got is the battery and here we're going to find some of the battery usage. Now this is not very accurate because I did connect the device to charge it before this review. So it's not going to be very very accurate but at least you guys can see some of the information on here. Uh, like I said before guys the battery is lasting me the entire day and a lot of that has to do because we have the power saver MTK6735 as well as a 720p display so it is helping it quite a bunch. If you go here into apps, we're going to find all the RAM available and this device comes with 2 gigabytes of RAM and we're going to notice that here right now and out of that we have about 1.6 gigabytes of RAM available. Very, very cool. We also got location. This is the smart wig that I was talking about and this is everything that we can enable from here. We can, uh, of course, set up the camera, the browser, uh, the file manager, but again, your security settings must be disabled in order for this to work well. Uh, then of course we got security, we have accounts, that's for your Google stuff and then here we're going to find the language and input. This device is supporting pretty much every language out there in the market. So let me just scroll down so that way you guys can check it out and see if this is going to be a device for you or not. So far for me it is guys, I might keep this device for quite a long time and that's because I do like the build quality. It's not a very, I would say, uh, you know, light device and it's not a very thin device but the specifications on it and the way it feels in the hand is what I like the most. So now let me go ahead and continue here towards the bottom where we're going to check the operating system and here we're going to confirm that yes it is the Android 5.1 as you guys can tell and everything about this device is true, nothing has been faked whatsoever. The next thing we're going to check here is some of the benchmark and also the multi-touch screen. This is a 5 point multi-touch as I mentioned earlier but first let me go ahead and check here the score that I got through the Antutu benchmark test. Uh, for that let me go here into the app tray, let's go into Antutu benchmark and I think that the score has been erased by now, actually it didn't. It was about 19,423. Like I said before guys, this phone doesn't have the most tremendous specifications in the market especially with the MTK6735 but it's still quite competitive. If you go here into information, here we're going to see all the information for this device. Now weirdly it says that it has the Android 5.132 bits. I think that's actually an error because this device is a 64-bit phone. The processor, the GPU, the Mali T720, the resolution of the screen, the camera, everything is correct on this particular device. Even the internal memory. So let me go ahead and continue scrolling down here so that way you guys can check out even the operating system. There we see it, the Android 5.1, but again, it is claiming to be 32 bits. The Android SDK version is 22. Then here we're going to see all the sensors supported. Now according to this, it only has a few, but the application that I like to use is called Android Sensor Box. It is my favorite application to actually see what sensors we have on here and which ones we don't. 
So, so far we have the light sensor, the accelerometer, the proximity sensor, and the sound sensor. And that's pretty much it, as you guys can see right here. So there we saw some of the benchmarking of this device. The next thing we're going to do is complete a Bluetooth test. Of course, here I have my big Beats. This is the Beats uh, Pill XL. Uh, pretty soon I might change this, guys. I know I've been saying it for quite a while. It's because right now the lack of time that I have, it is not allowing me. So there we go. It has powered on. Let's go here directly into settings and connect to the speaker. And right now we have connected to the Bluetooth speaker, the as you guys can tell. Device is connected us successfully. And here we go. So if you guys haven't noticed, the Bluetooth is actually pairing quite fast and the transmission is almost instant. Let me go ahead and try that one more time. As I was mentioning when we were doing the overview of the device, I mentioned that this loudspeaker is actually a very nice quality. That's the next thing we're going to do here is go ahead and test it out. So let me go ahead and uh, disconnect the Bluetooth from here. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Let's go ahead and turn it off. There we go. So now what we're going to do next is test it without the Bluetooth connectivity. Here we go. Now something I noticed is that devices like the Doji F3 tend to have a little bit more bass on the speaker. This one sounds flat. So now let me go ahead and open YouTube so that way we can test that the Google applications are working fine on this product and let's go ahead and open one of my latest videos. Also, we're going to notice that this device has a true 720p display because that's exactly what YouTube is reading or the max quality that we can put it into. Okay guys, so there we saw the quality of the loudspeaker and also that we are able to play videos up to 720p. Another testing I want to complete here is the camera. The camera on the front is a 3.2 megapixel sensor which I think is behaving quite well. It is much better than the Duchi F3 and also on the back we have a true 13 megapixel Sony IMX sensor. So let's go ahead and test it out and please let me know what you guys think about this camera. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Jay and right now we are testing the 13 megapixel sensor of the Yumi Hammer S. So as we can tell so far guys, the quality doesn't appear to be that bad, but again, it is just going to be another Chinese camera. It doesn't have optical image stabilization. The autofocus sometimes can be a little bit challenging if you guys ask me. So I would just recommend that if you're going to switch between objects, let's say I'm recording on this area and the focus seems quite decent, but then you want to change the position of the camera, just tap on the screen once. And when you do so, you can get a much better focus. So with this being said, sometimes you may have to edit your video when the focus doesn't look that good. Something that I consider to be a little bit of uh, an inconvenience. But so far guys, the camera is quite decent for the price of this product. Now let's go ahead and check the front facing camera. And now we are checking out the five megapixel sensor camera of the Yumi Hammer S. And once again guys, we cannot put it in full screen something very common on pretty much every Chinese device at least the mid-range devices they cannot record higher than 720p but now the selfie mode pictures are actually quite decent 
Okay, so there we have it for the camera testing. Here we have the UI of it, and this is going to be the back 13 megapixel sensor camera. Now this time you can see that the UI is exactly what we have seen many times before on Chinese phones. On the top you have exactly the same options. We have beauty face mode, panorama mode, and so on. Uh, nothing too special here on the side. We can just enable and disable the flash, put it on auto mode. Uh, also we can flip around to the front facing camera. We can just uh, take pictures or go um, directly into making videos as well now let's go ahead and check here the camera quality and we're going to confirm that yes this is a 13 megapixel sensor camera now if you guys have noticed I can only go up to 9.5 megapixels uh, reason being is that um, I have it a full screen and that's because I prefer this method but if I place it on the um, standard 4-3 ratio it's going to go back to 30 megapixels so now if I go here to picture size we can see that I can change it now this is not something that I really like because I like my pictures to be in full screen as you guys know already so for that reason I had to sacrifice uh, a couple pixels in order to do so uh, then we got of course the front facing camera now the front facing camera is okay for selfies I think it's much better than the Juji F3 the quality is actually better the colors are much better as well and even the focus but now for recording, it's not really the best choice out there, but at least it's doing the job for the most part. So now with that being said about the camera, the next thing we're gonna talk about here is the operating system. It is behaving quite well, guys. I'm not having any issues whatsoever or any errors. I was able to download pretty much any application that I wanted to, and that's because we only have one partition when it comes to the memory. Uh, also, the gaming side with the Mali T720 is working great. I was able to play games like Modern Combat 5. I was able to play Osball 8 and many other great games and without any issues. Once again, guys, this is very, very cool. Now, this device being a little bit thicker, I guess the processor is more towards the middle side and you don't feel the heat as much on the back. I would say it gets up to 92 degrees, which is not too bad. It does warm up, but that's normal on the MTK devices. Another subject we're going to talk about here is the fingerprint scanner on this device it's very very accurate now the only side that I didn't like much is that it is located on the back I really wish that it was located on the front that will allow you to actually access it a little bit easier even if your phone is sitting flat like this right now if I want to unlock my device I had to pick it up and then place my finger on the back and sometimes you have a hard time finding it and that's because it's almost flush with the entire back as you guys can notice right here or sometimes you might even get confused with the camera so you had to flip the phone around see where the fingerprint scanner is and then of course unlock it but right now since I know I have been practicing quite a while it comes a little bit natural let me go ahead and power on the device let me place my finger on the back and we can see how fast it is guys it has a very good accuracy I would say about 90% of 95% uh, of accuracy right now so there we can see it again let me go ahead and do it with the other hand which I have recorded as well so it failed once and then on the second attempt it did work let me try it again but most of the time it's because I'm trying to find the fingerprint scanner itself or sometimes I go to half of it or the other half. So yes guys, it is a little bit confusing but trust me, it is fully functional. Also, I think I forgot to mention here about the operating system that this device came already pre-installed with the uh, Google applications, the important ones like the Play Store, it came with Maps and many others. The only one that were not included was YouTube on here and also uh, the Studio app which I downloaded directly from the Play Store. Once you get this working, it's very easy. You just log in like any other Android device and then you can start downloading applications as you wish. Like I said guys, I didn't have any limitations whatsoever. I can download pretty much any applications without any issues. Another strong aspect about this device is going to be the GPS. On the road, it was working perfectly well. It locks the signal very, very fast. I didn't have any issues with it. And it comes like this right out of the box. You guys do not need to root it or customize it in order to get it this way. Here we have the GPS test application that I usually download to test it and let me go ahead and allow this. Uh, so here we're going to see that right now it's finding itself locking uh, 12 satellites and the signal is going to start increasing anytime now. So inside of the house, I mean, it's not going to get the best signal. We have seen other devices that do a little bit better than this, but when you get outside, it's going to work just fine, guys. Trust me, the GPS doesn't have any issues at all. The IR Blaster on the Yumi Hammer S is working like no other before. As a matter of fact, I compared it a little bit with my Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge and both of them had exactly the same range. Now something that I didn't like is that on the Samsung Galaxy S6, this part right here is, uh, it has like a smoke color where you do not see the internals. On this particular case, is a little bit clear and I can see the sensor inside giving you guys a feeling that it is cheap. But it's not, it's actually working nicely and I was impressed to see that it was comparable to the Samsung 
Galaxy S6 IR Blaster, which is very, very convenient. Uh, so all in all guys, so far, based on what I've said about this device, I think it's absolutely amazing. $130 is absolutely unbelievable. This time I have the pride to say that this phone will support 4G in the USA, at least with AT&T. Now keep in mind that I am using Cricket, and that's because Cricket, of course, is an AT&T based company. They are using their network, so any company like AT&T itself, Cricket, H2O, Net10, and all of those great companies are still going to work great with this device. Now talking about the 4G connectivity, let me go ahead and disconnect from the Wi-Fi. We know that the Wi-Fi is always going to be very fast and accurate, so we don't really need to test it. In this particular case, we're going to test the 4G network on Cricket. Now keep in mind guys that depending on the network that you're using this device with, it's going to vary the speed. Uh, let me go ahead and search for this same device so that way you can see that this phone just went down to $129.99, which is $130 of course. So let's see here, uh, this is the Yumi uh, Hammer. S. Actually, I forgot this base on there. Let me try that one more time. And the keyboard on the website seems to have a little bit of a delay, as you guys can tell. But that's not the phone itself, it's the website. So Yumi Hammer and then S. Let me go ahead and search it out. And here we're going to see it in just a moment. There we go, guys. The phone is only 129 for any color and of course they also sell accessories in case you need to protect it. I would definitely recommend it if you guys plan to keep this device for quite a long time. So that we saw guys, the browser test in my opinion I think it's working very very nicely. Of course it's going to be faster than 3G connectivity so if you were here in the USA and you were only getting 3G, imagine 4G is going to be a lot faster. As I mentioned from the beginning of this video, this device doesn't have the most uh, appealing, I would say, specifications in the market. As a matter of fact, a lot of people who see it might say, I don't think it's for me. I think it's going to be very buggy. But no, guys, trust me, this device is quite tremendous. Um, so here, let me go ahead and complete next a uh, phone call so that way we can check how fast it's going to connect. Here we so go. Right now, we have dialed 611. Now let's test the ear speaker. FYI, your current plan is basic, which expires November 23rd. Your account currently has a zero balance. I see you have auto pay set up. So there we heard the ear speaker quality, and I have to say that this is not the worst device, but it's not the best either in the market. I would say it's about average. Um, just a advice, I would recommend not putting the volume up to the max because you might run the risk of blowing up your speaker. As a matter of fact, mine is sounding a little bit scratchy after a very loud conversation that I had uh, with my mom. Uh, she was at the airport and we know that sometimes, uh, or some airports, you actually get out of the plane, right next to the plane, and that's exactly what she did. She called me saying that she was fine and all that noise, I had it you know, up to the max and all of a sudden I hear the speaker a little bit scratchy. So just keep that in mind guys, this is still a Chinese device it doesn't have the best parts in the market other than that I have to say that this phone is quite amazing I would say that for the price $129 is absolutely worth it I don't have any regrets whatsoever this is in fact after of course the Zisbo Longbow C58 that I unboxed and reviewed about I think it was about four months ago uh, this is the next amazing device and to be honest with you I prefer this one a lot better because it has a metallic frame it has an IR blaster it comes with a fingerprint scanner it has hot knot the Bluetooth 4.0 it has a 720p display it has the Android 5.1 so everything about this device is actually very exciting not to mention that the battery is a 3200 pound million battery and it's going to take you pretty much to the entire day as a matter of fact you guys can notice that this video has going on for about 25 minutes and the battery is still holding very very well with that being said guys like always if you do have any questions you know exactly what to do leave your comment below please like the video subscribe for more thanks for watching and i'll see you on my next one